recording again. Hello. Hello, Hello Welcome Earth back. Earthlings. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings, Earthlings. Uh, we have gathered here on a sort of uh, follow up, chill chat after the um, spring riding corner summer. And we figured we would do some future story layout stuff on camera, maybe? Yeah. So, what's the so, house? Just, just at the just at the head of this, I want to say that the working title, we haven't decided on a title mm -hmm. yet, but the working title is Collision Call, so when we talk about it, that's, that's what we're talking about. Yes. Uh, so, project... Project Collision Course. Here we go. I like that. <laughs> it immediately sounds sexier. <laughs> so this is why you're the editor. <laughs> yes, and why I get to name all the shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's true. It was called The Seeker originally, and now it's just Seeker. So she does get mm. to name all the things. Even Out the, of Arza, even the of things even the things I don't write. Zing yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anywho, Project Collision Course is our next collaboration project, which is in very early stages. Uh, it is a bigger Chaos Nova story, probably novel length. And it brings together Jewel Harper from Sika uh, and two other characters, uh, one of whom we have met in a short story that currently only exists in Estonian, and the other who we have met in a extra material that went along with the Sika book. That's that's like that's like the short summary. <laughs> and uh, in in uh, salvage mission, uh, wh one of those characters uh, picked up another one, and uh, so we've 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 built our sort of ensemble, mm -hmm. our, our cast of characters, and they all they do all have histories. And uh, the other thing is. It is, yes, it is in a very, very early stage at the moment, um, but material does exist, so mm -hmm. we're not starting completely from scratch. Yeah, uh, yeah. We've got Salvage Mission, we've got Scribe and the Doctor, we've got an understanding of where Jewel is and what she's doing. Fair enough, we haven't got a lot written down for that, but mm -hmm. we've, we know where all our pieces are, essentially. Yeah, so, so yeah, if, uh, if we consider the building blocks, then... Uh, uh, salvage mission and scribe on the doctor could become actual chapters within uh, the novel mm -hmm. o or they could remain a sort of prequel supplements but uh, I am strongly leaning on making them actual chapters because they sort of uh, with both of these stories we, we have had the issue that they uh, didn't quite stand on their own or like they were interesting to us because we knew what the implications of each story were and that mm -hmm. is a character goes somewhere to retrieve something and they do but while doing so they will stumble upon things that imply a bigger universe out there and in our case the the bigger universe being the multi-layered or multi-stranded uh, uh, fabric of reality itself and uh, in this story I think one of our goals is is to make it so that the characters have a brush with this uh, with this unknown nature of reality and by the end they will have to interact with it or like some somebody who has a has the means to interact with this uh, multi-layered uh, uh, reality will have them do something with it so it's like 
we're 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 not we're not holding back the quote unquote spoilers. <laughs> yeah. In in my head, the intention with this book has always been to introduce the reader to that element mm. of Chaos Nova. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm. Um, yeah. We're so fully it's on like. The same page with this. In, in a way, Collision Course is another team's uh, answer to what we have deja vu for our player characters. Mm. Just going back to the short stories real quickly, uh, mm -hmm. the fact that, just, just to give an example, um, Luna and Rogue aren't involved in the Project Collision Course in any way. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but just as an example, their short story in itself, prob we do get dropped in without any real introductions to the, the two of them. They're sort of in the middle of a mission um, and they deal with that mission and there are further implications, as mm -hmm. we mentioned earlier. That's, that stuff's exciting to us, right? Yep. Because we know what all those implications are yep. and, and what it means and, <laughs> and we're a bit more connected to Luna and Robo, I think, yeah. especially me. They're always going to be my favourites. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> I, just, I just love Rogue for her sassiness and Luna for her empathetic nature, <laughs> you know, like the, the fact that she really cares for people, which is great. Um, yeah, oh, bless her. She cares, she cares, she cares for people, but that really, really comes into odds against Rogue, who really doesn't care for people at all and just wants to do her own objectives, get her mm. own personal goals done. Um, so we know all this. All mm -hmm. this is fantastic, it's great, <laughs> and amazing, but none of it actually turns up in, in that short story. There's a bit of conflict and that mm. sort of thing. Um, so as you mentioned earlier would you like the salvage mission and uh scribe and the doctor they're i love reading the salvage mission and i love i love uh the ideas that we worked on together with scribe and the doctor and I, I know essentially what the story of scribe and the doctor is even though there wasn't a complete mm -hmm. english version of mm -hmm. it um but i i essentially know what mm -hmm. happened in yeah. the story um so and for me it's great because we're we're introducing a load of elements like servo for example and that kind of thing like we only have a little brush yeah we only have a little brush we don't that's that's the thing we we, we don't introduce servo we only we know that we hint at him <laughs> yeah there's like a little you know just, just a tiny one yeah just a very tiny one um and and for me because of the history that me and Keo have got with this universe and mm -hmm. what that in itself means, that's a real like big mo. Mm -hmm. right? So even though it's such a tiny thing in the story, <laughs> that's huge. A reader who's got no idea of any of this other stuff, and in fact, even if you've read Seeker and you go into scribing the Doctor, mm -hmm. you can't feel excited in the same way that we can. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't think. And so, and and I and I quote from uh, from the actual uh, completely unfamiliar and not very positively minded readers comment was something like uh, so they have an evil AI so what? so the evil <laughs> AI is modelled on a person so what? <laughs> and, 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 and like oh my god this means so much and like yeah so uh, when you first encounter such uh, such comments like <gasps> but 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 then you realize that yeah but they, they they are completely correct why should anyone care <laughs> yeah to an outside eye it means nothing right yeah so, so basically uh, we have we have to build the ladder from which they can fall and then they shall care <laughs> and, <laughs> yes. and that and that is and that is the one of the stated goals of collision course is that we will uh, step by step decision by decision build up this connection between the universe and the reader and mm -hmm. and yeah granted the uh, story will begin from the same place where salvage mission and scribe and the doctor begin a dude goes to a facility uh, to do to retrieve some stuff and while retrieving the stuff uh, they will uh, encounter something more but now we take that premise and we start building on it we mm -hmm. uh, so first of all we have two dudes 
who have run into stuff that uh, uh, that implies that something is not right in the world. So like they they will find uh, lists with or like they they will find information that uh, gives them grounds to suspect that something is severely amiss somewhere. So okay, I, uh, I I can't give too many examples because we we still have to build up that list. We still have to build mm -hmm. up the material. We have to figure out how to present this idea that uh, okay, we have facilities that seem to be identical. We have repeating uh, repeating names, uh, repeating experiments that seem that are either done on what uh, sane people would think are clones but are actually not clones like why why do i have different reports on the same person over and over that's that sort of thing so uh how to present this we haven't figured this this one out yet but basically these dudes find th find this sort of information and then uh we uh, make them investigate it they will come together I will also drop the name Svalbard here, so this is the scribe, uh, scribe orders, mothership uh, and or station where they have their data centers and analytical facilities and whatnot. Think Fallout scribes. Think, think Brotherhood of Steel scribes, basically. I, and I'm pretty, and now that I said it out loud, I'm pretty sure the idea has crawled in from there somehow or like there there might be a connection there is for me <laughs> the okay so the i just a tangent real mm. quick the original 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 idea with scribe was that he was going to f follow go to the locations that the other characters had already been to and caused chaos in mm -hmm. and he was going to act as a sort of summarizing character like he was following in their mm. footsteps oh, and okay. telling the stories of what happened after essentially mm -hmm. and on his trail um i i don't i think the idea of the, the name for scribe probably just came about because of that was what his job mm. was yeah, yeah he was going along and he was and I quite like the word scribe as well. <laughs> um, so that that was my original feeling of a scribe, but then um, it became more than that, and I'm mm. so glad it did. Uh, there might still be a, a, a place for such a character who follows the footsteps of all the other characters, like from mm. Caravaza to Taking Flight and all that craziness, um, but it's it's not scribe the scribe has developed into so much more uh, of course here's the thing uh scribe is a title it's a job description yeah. so yeah. we might have to give him a name yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh as a sort of contextual uh connection point or reference point uh in the always warm in uh, base camp uh, story even though it's in Estonian, in Estonian and nobody knows it but me, but basically the unit has a role that is essentially filled by scribe. So in 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 the story, I have called this uh, this job or this post as a the chronicler. Yeah. So nice. Essentially, essentially the scribe, uh, who is who is basically a communication officer uh, who is also taking care of you know rem who remembers shit like who yeah. who, who distributes the signals so it's it's like uh, uh, <laughs> the little router boy <laughs> so, so, so somebody somebody who uh, who makes sure that the unit's communications are working but who is also storing the information and and building models with the uh, with the science officers and so on. So, uh, I ha I have already brought that brought that in and used that concept elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, whether nice. uh, whether my scribe character has any relation to the Svalbard uh, remains to be examined. Like maybe they come from a different uh, scribe order, but uh, but the sort of uh, function is there. And uh, the and also the the skill set. So basically, they have highly augmented 
uh, bodies with uh, all sorts of uh, information storage and information processing and perception and cognition enhancements uh, uh, built in and they use all that to uh, uh, to retrieve information, uh, record information, deliver information. So it's like it's like a mashup of Johnny Mnemonic, uh, a space bard, uh, a Fallout uh, Brotherhood of Steel scribe, uh, a wandering uh, wandering minstrel. Uh, a monk order, all that. So, so, so basically, some pe people who who are responsible for the memory. I hide behind the pile of bards. And memory is the key. <laughs> so, so that, yes. That that's one of. Uh, okay, so scribe is uh, just going back to scribe real quick. Mm -hmm. He's got his suit and his special abilities, but he's also. Um, and his drones, obviously, but he's also got a—he's got an enhanced memory. <coughs> I don't think it's enhanced mm -hmm. in the way that Corey Servo enhanced. Uh, it's uh, more enhanced in the way that yeah. he's done memory. Trained like his, more his, like. His, his, yeah, exactly. His his order has helped train him uh, in in the ways of memorizing information mm -hmm. in in the situation where he can't just transfer it to. A removal drive or tempo uh, yeah. Uh, I actually uh, a, a quick jab in. Uh, I actually used this in the story as uh, in the end when uh, when the facility is powering up and mm -hmm. uh, the doctor is waking up, but the scribe doesn't know it yet. Uh, when the facility is powering up so that the data banks uh, become easily searchable. Uh, scribe uh, is making a copy of the data into his suit but he also wants to send a copy uh, to his ship right away but because uh, the because this part of the, the facility is shielded so heavily uh, he can't get a connection so his redundancy protocol is to commit the information in memory uh, nice. Which uh, which gives us the delay that allows the doctor to fully reboot and uh, uh, and and start his uh, his uh, rampage. Uh, but See, to me, that's terrifying, right? <laughs> the fact that the doctor's powering up and this this AI with this connection to certain other elements. <coughs> when. I get a shiver up my spine knowing what this shit is capable of, right? <laughs> that is gonna have not that reader's gonna be like, oh well, maybe Scribe's <laughs> in trouble now. This could be a problem, you know. But to me, it's like, oh, dicks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but in uh, in the context of of the upcoming larger story, uh, this means that uh, the scribe. Uh, has has escaped from the facility and his quote unquote analog memory or his learning memory still contains the list so uh, until he goes uh, until he deliberately uh, clears his mind or I, I, I would I would think that the scribes have some sort of uh, uh, forgetting protocol as well where they sort of uh, release the knowledge they don't want to, uh, and don't need but uh, for uh, for the time being uh, when he when he exits the facility he literally has the information in his head so he, he is pulling a bit a bit of Johnny mnemonic there and mm -hmm. uh, this means when uh, Nali comes with his list when he comes to describe order and wants uh, wants this uh, suspicious data studied then uh, scribe even if he has delivered uh, his part of the data to somebody else he still has this information in his in in, uh, in his head which means this gives him a uh, a possibility or opportunity to to put two and two together and like wait mm -hmm. we have the same names here or like wait this 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 thing looks like the thing that I have 
So basically, he he is able to uh, maybe accidentally uh, he is able to to see the pattern and uh, and look up this uh, uh, I don't know junk technician and mm. uh, and uh, and ask so what's what's up with that. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Oh, and uh, uh, continue. Yeah, uh, one more quick thought uh, before uh, before I forget. So we have we have somebody who is able to retrieve data, scribe. We have somebody who is able to retrieve people, uh, jewel, and we have somebody who is able to retrieve technology, knowledge. So it's like a a sort of uh, uh, free free different kind of specialists, uh, all who. Uh, who have made their living uh, getting getting stuff and bringing it to the client. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that before, but that is a very ah. good point. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Is the word trifecta? Uh, like tri no, trifecta is something. This is this is more like a trinity. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Trinity of special. Trifecta That's is cool. uh, is shit coming together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and there you go. Uh, Estonian lady has just schooled me on my English, <laughs> which, yeah. Um. So what else is there in Collision Course? We know we're bringing back Jewel and one of her street runner friends, Eclipse, which mm -hmm. I'm very excited for. Uh, yeah. Uh, I would. Yeah. We have like. We have a bunch of secondary characters who have already made appearance in uh, in Seek. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking there are also secondary characters that we know of from elsewhere uh, who we might bring in. Uh, although I, I would think that uh, when we lay out the foundation uh, of the outlines uh let's not get tangled in uh, in the secondary characters too much mm -hmm. so it's like uh we have we we have the uh, holy trinity of uh, junkyard library and prison <laughs> 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 and and the other characters are sort of revolving around them so it's like we have the three main characters and then the attached characters. Yeah. So, so for example, yeah. Okay. So most of the characters that we know of are attached to Jewel. So these are the uh, Jewelverse or ju Jewel related people. So that's like the the old guard, Raptor, uh, Trista, mm -hmm. um, Eclipse, all these sorts of people. Fortune. Uh, Fortune. Yeah. Um, and do we include the the bads in mm -hmm. all that? Uh, so yeah, the so so the uh, code name motherfuckers. Uh, so so <laughs> yes. the so the motherfuckers uh, should have agency, and within this one world, within this uh, this one thing, they should continue their meddling because basically Jewel interfered with their shit at the end of Seeker. Mm -hmm. And that uh, they have reason to be pissed off. Now they oh, yeah. now they also have the full knowledge of those meddling harpers, uh, which which means they they would be very motivated to uh, do things and and meddle some more. Uh, at the same time, this is where we should have uh, where we have to bring in the. Uh, wider implications and the uh, deeper connections so that yes they have their agenda but they have also been working for somebody else's agenda which in turn is uh, is sort of obstructed by their own little agenda <laughs> so like there's uh, there, there's that and somewhere in the background there is the Murphy station who knows even bigger agenda for whom <laughs> this all is is just uh, sort of waves in the pond that they will or ripples in the pond that they will sort of pick up uh, highlights from 
it's like, yes, this happens and this happens and this happens and we shall it's observe. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so easy when you put it like that. <laughs> it just sounds so simple. This book's gonna write itself, man. <laughs> we we've done it. <laughs> Stop yeah. the press. Yeah, we'll take the rest of the week off. <laughs> 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 It'll be out on Monday. Don't yep, worry. Yep, it's almost finished. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> this is this is like this is the cycle that I went through with the serialized. Uh, base camp story as well it's like when i started when i when i wrapped up each next part and i looked at the, the uh looked at the material ahead of me planned for the next one it's like oh i have everything laid out this this pretty much writes itself ah, i'm done here <laughs> <laughs> and then not a problem then, not a problem <laughs> then give it a week and it's like <laughs> oh dear. We My have face is hurting now because I've laughed so hard. Chill. <laughs> we, we, have, we have so much of that ahead of us. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And then the winter comes, and then the winter brain kicks in, and we're like. I have a question, but yes, and it relates to Scribe and 16, Ooh. and I'm gonna, I need to go into the document because I think mm -hmm. I worded it in the document better than I can word it now. I do tell. Um, collision course notes, just change that to project collision course because that's such a better name. Okay, let it load, 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 I got rid of that question by the way about mm -hmm. the sort of timeline of stuff mm. okay question how does scribe feel about 16 question mark my current headcanon suggests that scribe feels some responsibility for 16 whether he admits it or not scribe is already very driven to stop the experiments is this bolstered by 16 does he wish to find 16 or simply uses his memory as a driving force when things look bleak during the investigation or does he not care for 16 at all uh Okay, so here's what I worked out uh, during the short story. So you know how it begins. Mm -hmm. uh, Sixteen will uh, will crunch his uh, will crunch a scribe's drone, and <laughs> at first he is an adversary, or at, at first he's a threat. Then mm -hmm. he becomes a reluctant assistant. Uh, then they they share a joyful moment pissing in the corner <laughs> and then by the time uh, uh, by the time uh, doctor's uh, robot army shows up and starts uh, uh, clubbing them uh, then by, by then scribe calls 16 a friend at least in desperation so uh, I, I think I didn't word it very well in the Estonian story, so uh, the, the thing that I put in text should have been in dialogue. So basically he should cry out, uh, leave my friend alone or something like this. So at the, at the mm -hmm. end uh, he, uh, he does feel responsible, like they, 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 have, they are trying to escape from a bad, uh, bad experiment together. Uh, that fails, so I would think so. So on one hand, uh, he would feel desperation. Uh, he he would feel guilty. Uh, he would feel desperate. So I would think that he might wanna get back. Which of course uh, gives us a, an interesting question: if he should go back to to that outpost uh, will he be able to enter will the outpost mm. even be there so basically uh, if yeah. if he makes the decision to return uh, to that outpost what will he find uh, would be a very good question on the way uh, and timeline wise I would place 
this either at the, quite at the beginning or at the very end so it's like uh, on one hand the scribe might want to go back to the place right away and get more data mm. or he could even uh, delay his uh, uh, delay his departure and try to glean more data at least on the uh, on the EMP or, or the, the pulse attack or uh, he would be uh, he would uh, he would uh, not be able to return right away because reasons and he would sort of be motivated to return there and try to get 16 out or at, or at least find out more about this place and uh, if this is the case then we could place it to the very end even after they have visited the Trelasi prison station so it's like this could be this could be where the guard that stayed behind uh, leads them back to and this is where the interaction uh, with the upstream reality occurs interesting but yeah, recording. yeah but but there there would definitely be motivation there excellent well i'm glad we've got this <laughs> so that's that sort of <laughs> yeah man it writes itself yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> throw, throw more questions at me maybe maybe i have more I haven't got any. I was just like, uh, that was one of the ones that I came up with. Was what's the relationship between scribe and and uh, sixteen? But you've you've nailed it. Mm. Yeah. It would be good to. St I don't know if we see sixteen again, but it'd be good to get some sort of resolution as to what happened. With yeah. 16. So well, yeah, his relevance in the bigger story is is the experiments so his relevance mm -hmm. in the bigger story is is the whole why take a bunch of people and study them and uh, and like the, the whole server again that has to agenda has to come in there somehow mm -hmm. 16's obviously an important one though because well i don't know if he's an important one i suppose it's just the ai going through the motions of recapturing people who have escaped. Uh, yeah, uh, it's like I think the the phrase the specimen stays is yeah. okay. is, is <laughs> yeah, what yeah. is what defines him. So like he individually is not special but the sort of you, you can't you can't afford your experiments to ru to run around uh, freely is the idea and and since others have already escaped and he hasn't then he's like he's the last one of the experiment batch in that particular facility which is a important uh, variation in the data so like he is important data hmm. <laughs> but uh, but but not 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 him individually just sort of you know in the sense of ex experiment I was thinking the other day while I was working on Corey's character arc that the reason that Servo was unable to recover Corey straight after Tucker 9 is because of the events that have happened here. So Corey is an important subject and the Tucker 9 thing uh, from Servo's perspective is a test on Corey. Mm -hmm. um, and after that test is complete, Servo was going to recover Corey, but I think because he's also dealing with the stuff like the EMP at the facility mm -hmm. and all this other stuff that's going on in Servo's thing, okay. he is unable to recover Corey, and that okay. leads so, to Corey's escape and what have you. So this would tell me that the local Servo uh, doesn't mm -hmm. have all the resources in the world. Like he, no. he has, yeah, because uh, Servo is essentially the mad scientist type, which means mm -hmm. uh, he he has to he has to get his 
Katie, she, that that might also be uh, why the subjects in his facilities are a result of kidnapping is because he can't afford to get them any other way. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, right, so yes. right. Okay, so let, let's est- establish this. So the local universe servo uh, as a archetypical mad scientist has ambitions <laughs> has resources but not too many and he also mm-hmm. he has henchmen but not too many which means if there is a situation somewhere in his uh, in his web of things uh, and then there is another situation elsewhere in his web of things mm. he might not be able to address both of them in a timely and uh, efficient manner. Yeah. This is a good point, actually. Oh, yeah. This uh, so this this gives us uh, this also uh, gives us a little bit of uh, uh, a little bit of uh, why the local agents, like local local agents. So we we have the universe level. And we have mm-hmm. the system and homeworld level right here. So, mm-hmm. like one universe is in one timeline. So we have the one universe, uh, one timeline servo, who has henchmen. So again, we have this sort of a web of connections. Who has <laughs> henchmen and agents in different homeworlds, and in the Archaeus sphere of influence. Uh, he has some relation with the motherfuckers mm-hmm. and now because he is maybe spreading his resources a little bit thin here and there and has a lot of uh, variables to keep an eye on uh, the motherfuckers also can uh, do their own thing more because uh, or, or go unchecked for a while because servo's uh, attention is elsewhere. Yeah. This a is good shit. <laughs> the, uh, and it still fits with him uh, having that sort of group of reclaimers in Bayema because the way he's sort of got them onto his side is he's coerced them. Mm-hmm. He sort of said to them, mm-hmm. well, I, I can give you great power mm-hmm. uh, and whether that's the case or not remains to be seen, but he he's also got that group there, mm-hmm. so that that can still stand, essentially. Mm-hmm. They don't need to be a huge group. They, they still need to be a threatening group to the local uh, sort of space stations and that sort of thing. Yeah, but so basically... the wouldn't need a significant <laughs> force. <laughs> so, so basically the local universe or given universe servo is a somewhat enigmatic charismatic Mm -hmm. dude who has uh, grand ideas and wild theories but who has certain limitations and this and and in the context of a wider story yet it could even be that the Murphy servo uh, is deliberately uh, keeping or like uh, he he might deliberately uh, try to arrange so that the local servo resources don't get too abundant. Or like he 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 might be uh, deliberately yes. limiting some of his his versions so that they they wouldn't have too much freedom. That's excellent, <laughs> and that also sort of plays into the fact that a lot of the servos have got tidbits of knowledge mm-hmm. regarding certain things but they they can't seem to take it all the way yeah and it's a uh, limit of resources is probably a factor in that yeah so bringing a parallel from red versus blue is that the local servos are almost like the ai fragments it's that they mm-hmm. they run their experiments on a certain thing or a certain theme uh, or on a certain stock of people uh, but they don't have the full picture and when some of them start developing a bigger picture, then they become dangerous. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> uh, 
One other thing, while we're talking about servos real quick, the timeline that Dark Chaos comes from, the servo there is proficient at applying the traits to people. Mm. Uh, so he there's there's less failures. There are still failures, obviously, mm -hmm. but there are less, and he is he is better equipped to uh, apply those certain mm. special traits okay. to people. Um, but that's, that's Dark Chaos has got a lot of these. Dark Chaos's story, and I don't, I, she might bring this up. But essentially, she finds so she works as an agent for Servo. Mm -hmm the local servo after he gives her all these gifts and then her memory start coming back to her because memory wipe is a fucking thing with servo for whatever reason i think he just likes that so he can start from fresh with with the people he's working from like he doesn't he wants to meld them to be who he wants them to be not necessarily who they were um her memories start coming back and she realizes that it was servos reclaimers who killed her brother mm. right so mm -hmm. servo killed nux she goes into hiding for a little bit and then she ends up back on servo station and in a total suicide move she throws an explosive at an airlock or something or at some part part of the ship that mm -hmm. servo's on it explodes he gets the pair of them are in space now and, and Chaos is floating through space with a <laughs> smile on her face, right? She is grinning from ear to ear. She thinks she's, she's done her job. And then something happens. Yeah, exactly. She's having that moment. And uh, she's quite happy to die at this moment. But something happens and she gets picked mm. up either by Murphy or someone else mm. and brought into the team. Um, so that's Dark Chaos's backstory, and yeah, so she's she's mm -hmm. fucking dark, man. It's so good. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that so that's that in my mind that's the differences between the the different level servos. Some of them are focusing on one thing, some of them are focusing on something else, and some of them or a lot of them can't get to the full level of what they're trying mm -hmm. to get into. Um, yeah, so. and uh, I would say that this is a constant the threat with every servo is that he, he he's a bright one and he he will try to figure out the bigger picture like by default he is trying to figure out the bigger picture and and sometimes they can sort of get more knowledge than uh, than is good for the universe <laughs> mm -hmm. And that in itself causes problems, which is great. Yeah, yeah. so it's like it's a, it's story. a constant. So for for the Murphy servo, uh, who is using the versions of himself for uh, research purposes, it is a constant balancing act of dripping them enough materials and enough information that they can be useful for for his work. But not mm -hmm. dripping so much that they will try to actually take over the whole operation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> a note question thing. Uh, something something to maybe ask from uh, ask from Keo. Uh, what mm -hmm. does he think? Is the Murphy servo uh, the "Quote unquote real servo," or is he a variation from somewhere down the line who "quote unquote" rose in the ranks and, and took over? That is a very deep and interesting question, mm. and I also would like to know the yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah, yes. because what what I'm thinking here is that uh, most of the most of the servo mad scientist variations are pretty evil. <laughs> Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been like that since the beginning, and even during Deja Vu, Corey has real trouble coming to the terms with the fact that there is a version of Servo that yeah. isn't a bad dude, right? Yeah. So it's like uh, if if so many uh, of of his incarnations are pretty evil. And we have this one hero servo, or well, one that one that we know of. Uh, mm -hmm. Then, 
the sort of uh, speculation here or, or what what I'm thinking of is is the good servo where all the others meet or the upper reality servo or is he just uh, one just a fluke among the others mm. who who has gotten the means and and whatever although uh, actually coming from taking information from deja vu and what Kia wrote about uh, uh, how how his servo got the uh, the device mm. uh, that gave me that uh, actually that that gave me the sort of the idea that he is from from the upper layers of, uh, of reality the nice thing about the forums is though is that it's not really set in stone well, yeah, like yeah. so if he has a different idea or if we come up with a better idea during the writing of this that makes yeah, the story yeah. more interesting yeah that, that, that of course but uh, but if he has something uh, solid established that we can <coughs> use in our adaptation then mm -hmm. uh, then it would be it would be uh, good to know about it because then we don't have to figure this out ourselves. <laughs> yeah, man. Shout out to our homies Keo and Ru and chilling out in America and Canada, respectively. Canada. <laughs> well, I hope they're being respectful. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, and congratulations to Ru and the little family that you're creating, brother. That's awesome. Congratulations, Ooh. man. Is that what? Uh, are you saying what, you, good what luck. I think you're saying? He, his girlfriend is expecting. Ooh! I, I think his wife now. I think his yeah, wife. Yeah, they got is they got married like two yeah. years ago. I think. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Shows then. how behind the times are. But yeah. The spawn. <laughs> yeah. <man. laughs> that kid's gonna have such an awesome life, right? All the stuff that Rue's into. Right. <laughs> That could have an all, awesome all the lawyer. all the cosplay and stuff. Yeah, man. But now, Super nerd. Uh, where were we with the outline? <laughs> we we veered Ooh. off in the bigger topics. We, we got onto we got onto Jewel and Eclipse, and we started talking about how secondary characters, while nice, shouldn't really be the focus of the story, right? The Trinity uh -huh. is the focus. Uh, and well, the Trinity and the introduction of the timelines, time mm. streams. Um, so after after that, and I think Jewel and Eclipse are having a sort of training fight thing in mm. the Harper compound, and and Eclipse is asking Jewel some very pointed questions mm. about her, how her control of Harper House, and why is no one mm. listening to her, and all this. And Eclipse knows the answers to these questions. She's mm. just trying to get Jewel to think. Or possibly yeah. even throw Jewel off guard so she can get the upper hand in this little so... sparring. Or not training fight. We're not using the word sparring. <laughs> <laughs> Boxing match, rather. Yeah. Or, or kicking match. Uh, so yeah, as far as, uh, as character introductions go within this story, Jewel gets mm -hmm. a very different entry than the guys. Because the guys... Yes. Go somewhere, find something, discover something, and then learn that this might be trouble. <laughs> but Jewel is basically in the domestic bliss, uh, trying to uh, uh, trying to adjust to her responsibilities as the head of the household and the company, and failing mm -hmm. at, at it. <laughs> yes. So of, of course oh, uh, she she her, did man. she did have her retrieve something discover something moment but that was uh, that that was in the other book so mm -hmm. so in here she gets a different kind of introduction and uh, the uh, and the proverbial collision course or how the characters drift together uh, would also be a little bit different so the guys come together because of the information that they found and 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 became suspicious of, whereas uh, Jewel or other and or other people in her family uh, would be people who are in that list. So it's like the uh, the junk collector and the data collector, and data jockey, <laughs> junk jockey and data <laughs> jockey. Uh, they will deliberately seek her out. 
mm-hmm. uh, and or seek her out in order to seek out somebody else in her family mm. so it's like they they go there knowing who who they want to meet mm. and and, and, uh, and then and then the adventure built from builds from there yeah uh, I, I, f- I think uh, as far as events go uh, let's not even speculate further right now so uh, if we do have any more thoughts right now let them be more about the universe dynamics and the character dynamics so le- less about specific mm. events because we we have those written down <laughs> I'm looking forward to the dynamic between uh, Gnarly, Scribe and Jewel. I think they're all quite different people mm-hmm. in their own rights and I think it's going to be interesting seeing how the three of them interact with one mm. another. Uh, in my notes, it's already sort of... De- like, instinctively, I was like, Jewel would take the captain position. Now, I don't know if that's true, and I don't know if you agree with that, but I think Jewel would probably be sort of like, well, I paid for the fucking ship. I'm, I've yeah, got the, the most experience here. Sort the, of the, thing. the whole paid for the fucking ship part, that is still up to debate. Al- yeah. al- although, uh, she, uh, well, she, she is, she's rich. Yeah. Sh- she has resources, and she has a trade house uh, behind her back so uh, mm-hmm. it would be safe to assume that she would have access to to such resources I, I, I would think that she wouldn't purchase purchase the ship but uh, mm-hmm. she would already have something in her family's uh, wares ah, yeah possibly I didn't think of approaching it from that oh, angle I was okay. thinking I was like, maybe Eclipse is given access to Jewel's account, and because she's sort of like oh. streetwise, she, people wouldn't rip her off. And oh, like, okay. So that's that's yeah. that's why you didn't bring it up. I I thought it would be uh, much uh, safer to assume that she will just take something from the Harper garage, essentially, because okay, I, I, that's I, awesome. Yeah, because again, since they are a trade house, even though fallen from the grace, and they do have enforcement. Uh, they they would have uh, and like they they used to do trading rounds and they used to do uh, they they also used to do like enforcement flights. Uh, this would mean that they would have at least some some sort of family shipyard. <laughs> <laughs> like how big oh, it man. is. I wonder what is, is Max is had stored away somewhere. Like I bet he had some real nice ships as well. Uh, may, maybe even so. So it's maybe even like at the moment in their current state, they can't afford something fancy or like not what they used to have in their glory days. Uh, but like, but here is this old thing, <laughs> <laughs> and and since uh, the Harper House has this uh, operation system where they have a shit ton of sort of unofficial partners or like the. Uh, the street people who act, who actually work for them, or you know, the invisible enforcement, then it might very well be that they have certain uh, caches of equipment, or like like safe houses or caches of, of equipment stored here and there. Uh, the same way that Trista has uh, <laughs> stored the resources for looking uh, looking for fortune. Which in turn is the same way as the uh, c- corrupt smith has uh, uh, yeah. squirreled away resources for her own people. Getting idea from that. I love that. how it all links. <laughs> it's all connected. So yeah, basically, mm. you 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 have your you have your uh, you have your bug out shuttle somewhere, maybe. Mm-hmm. And it it could be that in the current state, the Harper House can't afford to give uh, the Missy. Uh, a, a a nice and fresh uh, ship for her new adventure, but uh, they might be the the house the house crew might be generous enough to point her 
to a to one of those uh, bug out caches where she finds let's say maybe a ship that Trista has left behind years ago I okay. like this idea <laughs> I'm getting this image in my head, I don't know if you've seen any of the Fast and Furious films, but they're like, the, I don't know if this is a storyline from them or Need for Speed, but the guy wrecks his car and 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 all his race buddies are like, man, you you got to get back into the race game, and he's like, but I don't have a car, and in the back of the garage somewhere there's this piece of shit like Nissan or whatever that's been there for 20 years, it's missing an engine or whatever, mm. right, maybe not to that extreme, but by the end of the film, this car has got its own personality now and is like, it might as well be another member of the crew kind of thing. Mm. Like, it, it's a really touching moment. So, mm. that, I think, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining something maybe a little bit similar to that. Where maybe. It's like, and like, this is, this is yeah. also where Nolly as a salvage technician can be useful, is that if the ship needs fixing, we're gonna have a montage. <laughs> yeah. <man. laughs> so if the if the ship needs uh, fixing, he might be able to procure uh, extra parts and and he might be able to do stuff with it. Uh, also, uh, one quick point about the Z Trinity uh, mm. is that each one of them is a super private person. So it's like that is true. Each of them is used to doing shit alone, because uh, Joel was traveling alone, didn't want to deal mm -hmm. with other people. Nolly is sitting at his uh, work post alone, doesn't want to deal with other people. Mm -hmm. And Scribe, by his very profession, is li is like completely alone, because mm -hmm. that's that's how we that's just how he works. So this is this is a, dan a dynamic to bring in when they have to work together. I'm really looking forward to mm. it. But yeah, it's when it really when cool it when it comes when it comes to the point where uh, where the guys look up Jewel and try to hire her or warn her and or uh, or or find her family member through her and. And she's like, well, I'm, I, I, I suck at this uh, head of the house thing. Uh, I'm out of here. <laughs> 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 uh, and they and they will have to find a ship to do that. Uh, then uh, she would be pointed to one of uh, Trista's old caches somewhere, in in the lower levels of the city, hidden somewhere in the city structure in the su yeah. sewer level <laughs> okay i'm i'm having maybe a little bit too much fun with this right now but yeah basically <laughs> go for it uh, run with it man i know an, an heirloom heirloom reed crap ship that her mother left behind uh when she first started putting together the resources for the rescue mission there's so, a really funny moment in Caldevaza when uh, Rafa and Icarus have been given this job to go and intercept a freighter, mm -hmm. and they've got they've got nothing. They've got no fucking ships to do it. They've got to go out on a transport ship, and that's a big problem. Mm -hmm. And on their journey back to the base to organise all this, um, uh, Zelid joins them, and he basically just chews them out. And at one point, Icarus turns to him and he's like, I really hope this is the point where you tell us you've got a ship hidden away somewhere. And Zelda's like, nope, nope, nothing, you're on your own. <laughs> well, I'm glad we're doing the sort of, we might be doing the, the reverse of that in, in uh, Collision Course. That would be pretty interesting. Uh... We've got, we've got a few more points to make about this, but I think possibly we could break this into a second video. Yeah, uh, I think this is a good idea, uh, because point one, then the video will be more watchable in its length. Point two, mm -hmm. pee break. Point three, tea break. Yes, and also I'm terrified that this won't save to the computer like <gasps> I always am. So, Indeed. Yeah. yeah, so we are wrapping up uh, the idea shifting slash outlining for project collision course uh, for the moment we will reconvene mm -hmm. shortly stay tuned uh, if you watched so far you you must really like us 
you deserve a cookie. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this far. In fact, actually, if you've watched this far, mm. leave a comment down in the description and uh, I will pick out of those comments, uh, just, just say something like I'll watch the end or, or something to that effect. And I will pick a name out and I will send you a paperback copy of Caldervada. Just because you deserve it for sitting through all this. <laughs> so yes, thank you. There might well. be a test later. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop recording this and we shall see you in the next one. Bye.